Hello! Welcome to this orange couch. My name is Kate. I am a knitter and sometimes sewist maker of clothes coming to you from North Carolina. This is episode 20 of my little uh, video podcast thing where I just show you what I have been making and what I want to be making and stuff like that. Um, so today I have six finished objects for you. Four of them are knitting. Um, but before I get to that, I also want to let you know that everything that I talk about is linked in the description box below. There's also links to other places that you can find me, like on Instagram and Ravelry, where I'm Kate V Knits, and then also on Goodreads if you want. I've been reading a lot lately. I did 18 books this summer, and so if you're interested in, in following me there, you can also follow me there. So all of that is linked in the description box below. But uh, in this episode, I will be showing you four recent knits and two skirts that I've sewn and talk to you about sort of what I'm doing with skirts and that kind of thing. So yeah, first things first is what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Sea Line Tank by Skein Deer Knits and I made this a year ago at least out of some Knit Picks Kotlin and it's one of my favorite tank tops. I keep wanting to, meaning to add two extra buttons because I only have these three little buttons here and I keep meaning to add a couple because I think it would look better, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So, but it's one of my favorite tank tops. It has a, it's a fake button band. You just pick it up and knit it right onto the front of the body. Um, and yeah, no, it's cute and doesn't use that much yarn. So I've knit several things of skein deers both sweater kinds of things and her summer stuff. She came out with a whole summer collection a year or two ago. So anyway, that's what I'm wearing. Um, all right, so my first finished object, which I think I showed as a work in progress last time, but it was a test knit by Yamagara and the garment is now released. So you can purchase it and knit it for yourself. So this is a top-down basic tank top, pretty much. I mean, the body of it is pretty plain, but the thing that makes it special and that I like so much is the flower stitch that is on the, the front and back neck opening, which there's four of them for my size, but I think there's maybe one fewer or more on different sizes anyway. And then it's also on the hemline all the way around. And so otherwise it's pretty basic tank top. I knit it out of Drop Saffron in Pumpkin. And Drop Saffron is a sport weight 100% cotton yarn. And it's pretty budget friendly. This whole garment is pretty budget friendly. I used a little bit less than four skeins of yarn. So four skeins of yarn is about $5 and 30 cents in total. The pattern was free because I test knitted it, but if you bought the pattern, it's currently with the exchange rate $8.04. So $13.34 to make, very inexpensive. Um, but yeah, no, it's pretty, it's pretty basic construction of a tank top. You start at the top and, I don't know, is this bottom up? No, it's not, it's top down. <laughs> you start up at the top and you, you know, knit the strap and the increases until and then you knit the strap and the increases on the other side, and then you join them together with this nice flower stitch thing on the hem, or on the edge, and then you knit down until the sleeve opening, and then you pick up on the straps on the top, and knit down, and do the same thing, and then you knit in the round. So, pretty basic construction. And the yarn is really nice to work with. I had been when I, when she, Yamagara, the designer, reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in test knitting, I had been working on another garment using this yarn and I liked it so much that I just decided that I was immediately going to use it again. Um, and so between this and the Hobby Rainbow Cotton 8.4, these are my two favorite budget cottons and I really enjoy working with them. They are nice and soft and they shrink quite a bit which is something to keep in mind, <laughs> is that they will shrink quite a bit, but I really enjoy working with them. So anyway, I made no modifications to this other than cropping the body to sit at a, you know, length that I enjoy. 
Um, I like wearing this with one of my fuller skirts. I apologize, it's wrinkled. It's been <laughs> folded um, and sitting in my drawer. But so I did crop it to sort of hit my upper hip length instead of doing the full length, but I didn't add any waist shaping or any bust starts or anything like that because it was a test knit and I didn't want to modify how the garment would fit someone of my size and shape. But if I knitted again, I absolutely would add bust starts and waist shaping because I have become spoiled by them. And now I want to put them in everything. So that's that. I apologize. I'm gonna mute this computer so that notifications are not going off. Anyway, so even without the shaping though, it's a really nice fitting, just loose, easy breezy summer tank top, which is great. And it was really inexpensive to make. Always a big fan of that. And I love the color. I love orange. It's very pretty. Um, yeah, that's all on that one. Oh, I knit the size four, which is 44 inches, which I thought at the time, I thought that 40, well, at the time, I thought I was still a 44 inch bust, and so I thought it was gonna be zero ease. And I was like, I measured it, and I got gauge, and I measured it, and I was like, this is 44 inches, why is it so big? I should measure myself. I measured myself, and I'm not a 44 inch bust right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a couple inches of positive ease right now, but I think I just, I fluctuate in the summer way less than I do in the winter, so that's fine. Uh, good to know. So that's that. That is my first finished object, and that is now for sale. So if you're interested in it, you can buy it now. Yeah. My second finished object is another tank top. They're not all tank tops this time. Um, is another tank top. This is the Santa Eularia tank top by Ancho Las Manos, which means between the hands, which is, I think, a nice knitting business name. So it's once again a tank top. It has this lace panel on the front with bobbles on each side going all the way down. And then it also has bobbles around the armhole openings. And then the back is all the lace. And then it's just got a garter stitch neck opening and garter stitch hem. So I made this out of Drops Bell in the zinc color. And Drops Bell is a DK weight, 53% cotton, 33% rayon, and 14% linen blend. And um, the yarn is a little bit, what is the word I'm looking for? Where it's two different colors of yarn that are plied together or knit together. I'll put the word here. Anyway, um, the color texture thing that I'm looking for is there. So you can see that the, I think it's the linen is a little bit darker and it's more of a brown color whereas the uh, cotton and rayon is a gray color. And so from a distance, this just makes this nice warm brown. Marled, that's what I'm looking for. But up close, you can see that the yarn is a little bit marled, which I think is fun. I really enjoyed working with this yarn. It's softer than some of the other cotton linen blends that I've used because of the rayon is soft. And so that's nice, but it still just feels, it's drapey, but it's very substantial. It's not, it's just, it's nice. I like it, is what I'm saying. Um, I, while I enjoy how this looks, and I didn't mind knitting it, I know I get tired of bobbles when I'm knitting them, and every single time I finish knitting something with bobbles, I'm like, oh, I'm never going to do that again. Bobbles are terrible. Never gonna knit bobbles again, but I just do it again, every time. So, um, you know, that's knitting the bobble, bobbles was a pain. Fortunately, you knit like the, <laughs> you knit the front part first, which has more bobbles than the back part because the back part is just the lace. And so um, you get that all the worst of the bobbling out of the way first. 
But anyway, um, my main issue with this garment is that I do not feel that it's well graded. Um, after I had finished knitting the front, and you can see in the pictures and on me that this is very high in the neck, which is intentional, but if I had knit the back to the same way, it would have basically been choking me. And so I ended up choosing to do the armhole decrease pattern for a different size because it ended up being longer. And then I also lengthened the back strap. So the top of the strap doesn't sit at the very top of my shoulder. It sits a bit forward because I needed more neck room. And looking at the other people's finished pictures, I think that it's just not a very well graded pattern for the bigger sizes. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> but um, I still do like how the finished garment turned out. I also added bust darts, as I have been doing with everything lately. So I added German short row bust darts, as you can see here. So I started them a couple inches down from the sleeve separation. And this one's pretty shallow because it was already pretty loosely fitting. I've, in my experimentation with adding German short row bust darts, I found that if the garment is negative or zero ease, I want a deeper bust start. But if it's already a positive ease garment, it's already kind of loosely fitting, then I just do a shallower one just to help with the hemline issue. And it does make it fit a little bit better, but I don't need it necessarily to like add room for my bust. It's just to help with the fit. So this one is a pretty shallow bust start, as you can probably see, it's it didn't go over too many rows, but it just helps a little bit with the fit, makes everything look a little nicer. So that's good. Um, I knit the size large, which had a few inches of positive ease. So this was also a budget knit. I used seven skeins of this yarn. Uh, when I bought it, it was $2.08 a skein. So it was $14.56 in yarn. And the pattern is quite cheap. It was $5.18 for the pattern. So it was $19.74 in total, which maybe that's one reason why I'm not too upset about the grading issue is it's a low priced pattern. It's not like I paid $12 for this pattern and then I had to re <laughs> I had to do so many adjustments to make sure that it fit. Um, it's fairly inexpensive. Um, and given that the, the lace pattern is the same on every single size, it's not too hard to just pick a different one and like make sure you end up with the same number of stitches and you're good to go. So it wasn't too big of a deal. But I do really like the lace back. Um, it's not like super see-through you know I mean you can still see my bra underneath it but it like I'm still comfortable wearing it to school and stuff because it's not super see-through but it's very comfortable for the summer it's very breathable because it's just got the back is just a giant vent <laughs> which is great but I and I really like the bobbles I find that in a lot of tank tops the edges of things curl in like on this one the edges tend to curl in on the straps which is fine but um it is nice on this the bobbles keep it flat you know they don't curl at all so yeah i think that's all i have to say about it i enjoy it also this yarn also shrunk a lot in length so the pictures that I've shown were before I washed it and dried it in the dryer. And it was a lot longer in those pictures. And now it's shorter, but that's fine. Because in the pictures, I felt like it was too long. But now it's not. It's great. So here we go. Santa Eularia. So that's done. Okay. My third finished object is something I had knit before. I don't repeat a lot of garments. I should do it more often because it would save me money, but I just, I want to knit all new things all the time. But I decided that I wanted to make another Anker Summer shirt because I really enjoy the fit of the Anker Summer shirt. It, you know, it's a circular yoke, but the, the yoke is all ribbing. And so it like, it sort of 
makes it fit my upper chest without having to grade between sizes because the ribbing just sort of like contracts the fabric in. Uh, so I find that it fits really well. But when the first one I made, I made this a long time ago. It was one of the first t-shirts that I knit. And I remember I was knitting on this while I was in the process of moving to North Carolina. So about a year and a few months ago. So this is the first one that I made. Um, and I didn't do any waist shaping. I didn't do any bust starts or anything like that. And I was, I'm still happy with the fit. It still fits pretty well, but it is boxy because I didn't add any fit modifications. So I decided that I wanted to make another one because I already liked the fit, but now I know how to do German short or bust starts and waist shaping and all of that. And so I wanted to try that out. So I <laughs> once again, fell victim to the Lion Brand Yarns FOMO. Lion Brand comes out with great new bases and then they go away. And so when they come out with a great new base, I feel that I have to buy it or I will never see it again. So I bought some, they came out with this LB Collection Cotton Bamboo Linen. And it's a sport weight, 40% cotton, 35% bamboo rayon, and 25% linen. And I thought, well, that is a beautiful looking base. Oh, it's so drapey and nice and silky smooth and beautiful. And I love this color. This is sage. So anyway, I bought this yarn and I was like, I'm going to make another Anker summer shirt with it. And so I did. So here it is. And as you can see in the pictures that I'll put up, it fits extremely well because I added bust starts. Magical, magical bust starts. So here they are once again. So this one's a little bit deeper than in the last one because this is a tighter fitting garment. I knit the extra large, which is the same size I knit last time, but my gauge was a little bit tighter. Um, and so it is a little bit smaller, but the bust starts, make sure to add room for the bust, which is great. I also knit the sleeves a little bit longer than I did last time, I think. But yeah, so I am very happy with this. And it was super fast in it. I know that, I know that the amount of ribbing, <laughs> if you uh, are not a quick rib knit person, then this can be just an appalling garment to knit, but I can do one by one rib pretty quickly. So it doesn't bother me at all, but yeah. So that's that. I mean, I don't know if I have much else to say about it. It's a, uh, it was pretty straightforward. I just, I did that and I added bust starts. And I guess though, what I can talk about is how I'm sort of doing bust starts without having to do much math ahead of time, because I know that there are guys online. So if you are interested in learning how to do German short row bust starts, but you're like, I do not feel like I want to just do them based on vibes, then you can look up guides where you put in your gauge, you put in your row gauge, and and you put in like your upper bust to full bust or whatever measurement and it'll spit out like a guide to doing the German short rows for whatever. But I don't want to mess with that. And so essentially what I'm doing when I'm knitting something top down, it's very easy. I am knitting long and then I wait until I'm like two and a half inches past the underarms. I've just found that that is a good place for me to start is two and a half inches like and that'll depend on where your bust is. If you have like higher sitting boobs than me then maybe less and if you have lower sitting ones then maybe more. But for me two and a half inches works and that's just trial and error. I have some where the bust starts are too high and some where the bust starts are too low and that's how I figured it out. Um, and so I just wait until I've been knitting for about two and a half inches after here and then I try it on and I sort of note, I, I use like a removable stitch markers, like those little light bulb shaped ones. And I'll try it on and I'll figure out sort of where the apex of my bust is or the nipple. And I'll stick the removable bust, or well, I'll do it on one because it's hard to tell exactly where it's sitting. And I'll do it on one and then figure out how many stitches away that is from the center underarm stitches. And so say that's like 28 stitches. And so I'll go on the other side and do 28 stitches from there. And that's where it's going to start. And so I'm knitting long and I'm knitting long and I knit, I'm going around the front and I knit to the first mark stitch. 
and I remove that and I do the double stitch and turn. And then I come back and I go to the other side, okay? And so say I did like 28 stitches and I'm looking at my row gauge and I'm measuring out and like, okay, if I did every other stitch, which would be 14 rows back and forth, 28 divided by two, then how many, how much fabric, extra fabric would that produce at its, at the biggest part of the wedge? How much fabric would that produce? And if that looks good, then I'll go with that. Or if I maybe want it shallower, then I'll do every third stitch or every stitch if I need a deep one, whatever. And so say I'm like, okay, every other stitch. And so I did my double stitch over here and I purled back and then I purl the double stitch that I made and then I purl one and then I purl another one and I double stitch that one. And so I did my double stitch, purl one, double stitch. And I come back. And I do that back and forth and back and forth until I get to the center underarm stitch on each side, which is sort of where I like them to end. And then at that point I just resume resolving them in the first round and I just re resume around. And so that's how I do it. Which if you've never done sh German short rows, that whole explanation was absolute nonsense. But um, there are guides, like there's better explanations. <laughs> but um, you know, if you're a fairly experienced knitter and you've done German short rows before and you just wanna know like, how do I do it without having to do math? That's how, is I just figure out where I want them to start and how many stitches I have and kinda do I want it every two or three stitches? That's it. So there we go. So that is my second Anker summer shirt. Here's my first one. So now I have two of them, which is fun. I wish that there was, one thing I will say about this pattern is I wish that there was short row shaping on the neck because it does kind of creep up the front of the neck in a blade that's not super pleasant. Oh well. Okay. There's that. My last finished object is the Kesa T, Kaisa T by This Bird Knits. Make sure I've got the front facing you. There we go. By This Bird Knits. Uh, this it was made out of Hobby Rainbow Cotton 8.4, which is one of my favorite budget cotton yarns. And this is the olive colorway, which I know is not the most appealing color to a lot of people, but man, I think that this is really complimentary on my skin. I think it looks good. But anyway, this was a pretty basic top-down lace yoke tea and it is it uses not that much yarn it's pretty loose gauge might be able to tell and so it was just like really quick and really easy to knit and after I got past the yoke it was just stockinette which now that I've started classes again mindless stockinette is king because I don't have to pay attention to it but I do like how the yoke shaping ended up, or the increases. Um, instead of being sort of even all the way around, there the increases are positioned sort of in between these leaves, which I think makes it look nicer. It looks more intentional, I guess. I don't know if you can really see the increases. Yeah, you can. So it looks nice. And so it's just this lace leaf motif all the way around. It was pretty straightforward. The neck opening does not have just standard one by one rib. It has some yarn overs to make it sort of open. I don't know if that really adds much to the design, but it wasn't hard to do. And I knit the second size. This is intended to be extremely oversized, but I didn't want it to be extremely oversized. Um, so I knit the second size, which was 47 inch bust circumference. So it's oversized, but it's not huge. Um, it's just, I didn't want it to be gigantic. But even at the 47 inch bust circumference, I used 
a little less than four skeins of yarn. It was $1.88 a ball. And the pattern was $8. So $15.52 in total. So that's a, it's a great way to use like a smaller amount of yarn and not make a ranunculus. <laughs> Cause that ranunculus man, it's so tempting to just, I have a small amount of yarn. Let's make a ranunculus. How about we find alternatives to the ranunculus too? So here's an alternative to the ranunculus. It does use more, more yarn than a ranunculus, but I think you could get away with doing even less. Like if you knit the smallest size, I think this was knit on US 8s. If you did the smallest size on a US 10, that would be more similar to a ranunculus, I think. So you could do that. But anyway, so this is nice. It's a nice thing to throw over a dress. I can't really wear it on its own because it's too see-through. I don't know if you can really tell here, but it's too see-through to wear on its own, but it looks really nice over a dress and it's nice and cool. And I really like the color. It was easy. Yep. That's all. I did no modifications. I didn't add shaping. I didn't feel the need to add shaping to it. It's easy. So that's that. So those are all four of my knitting finished objects. Getting a little bit more diversity in color. <laughs> in my last episode, everything was an earth tone. And this time I have a little bit more range <laughs> of colors, which is great. Yes. So that's good. I always feel, oh, my favorite color is orange. And I always feel like I can't do it too much because then my wardrobe will be too orange. But then I realize that I'm overly cautious about that and I don't actually knit that much orange. I need to embrace the orange. It's okay for me to knit more orange. Anyway, that's that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of skirts that I have made. And I have sort of stopped, I've stopped sewing from specific patterns of skirts because the first skirt that I made, the Simplicity 80, 2184, I think, Simplicity 2184, is in the below part if I said it wrong. Anyway, I made, that was the first skirt I ever made. And then I made like three more because they're great. But the thing is that they had... They had pockets, which was good, but they had a, a zipper and a clasp closure and no elastic in the waist, which is great. However, two of the earlier skirts that I made are now too big because I lost weight. And so I was like, hmm. I mean, I can still wear them. They're, they, it's not that they'll fall down, but they're too loose. And so I was like, well, I should incorporate elastic. And so someone helpfully sent information on how to make a flat front elastic back skirt. And so what I have done is I, I went to the scrap exchange, which I've talked about before. It's a place with scrap fabric and it's very inexpensive, but they have um, just rolls of white fabric. Most of it is stained. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, they have just rolls of white fabric that is a dollar a yard. And so I bought a few yards of white fabric so that I could transfer pattern pieces that I use a lot onto those. And so now I have like, I have an elastic casing and a flat waistband one and pocket pieces and skirt pieces. So depending on whether I want a flat front or a full elastic. So now that's just my default skirt. And I've modified the sizing of the skirt panels a little bit, but anyway. So I now, the skirt panels and pockets come from the Simplicity 2184, and then the waistband and other things are just from other miscellaneous patterns. So it's not really like purely one pattern anymore, but it's just like Kate's skirt. So here is the first skirt that I made using the Kate's skirt pattern pieces. And this one is flat front. And I got this fabric from Cottoneer, which is now my new favorite fabric source because they just have lots of beautiful cotton fabrics. And I, it's this beautiful plaid. And I just, I really like this fabric. It's nice. It's not quilting cotton, which is fine. My other skirt is quilting cotton, 
And it, I like quilting cotton too, but it's nice to not use that sometimes. So it's got pockets in here somewhere. Yes, it's got pockets, big ones. Wahoo. Anyway, there they are. And it's knee length, like I like. It's got the flat front and elastic back and it's gathered. And also I learned how to use the overlocking stitch on my sewing machine. And so I just overlocked the seam finish thing and the pockets. I overlocked the edges of those and stuff too. So anyway, yeah, there's that. Gotten a lot of wear out of that. Worn it with this shirt specifically a few times. So yeah, there's that one. And then here's one that I made that is a full elastic waist. It's almost the exact same skirt, but instead of having a flat front, it's got a full elastic waist. And I also sewed in the middle of the elastic to keep it from folding. And so this I also got from Cottoneer. This was technically a Chris in a Christmas collection, but it's just a black and white, so it doesn't feel Christmassy. But once again, I did use the overlocking, finishing, which is so easy. I decided not to get a serger because I found out about the overlocking stitch on my sewing machine. And it also has pockets. And so this is just, this is just the Kate skirt. Gathered, waist, pocket, knee length skirt. It's great. It's perfect. Love it. And so now I just have fabric pieces that I can use over and over again. And it, like, I can whip out a skirt in a day now because I know how to do it. And yeah, and like, I, I like sewing in that I can make cute skirts that have the features I want in fabrics that I think are cute. But it's not like I, uh, it's not my passion. And so I don't think I'm ever gonna become like a great sewist but I do like making some skirts. They're fast to do. So there's that. Those are my two sewing finished objects. So yes. Uh, next and last, I'll talk about my works in progress. My first one is sh <laughs> source of shame. I've been working on this for so long and the problem is, sorry, I have some, I have some threads from sewing. It was sitting next to my sewing machine. I've got some snipped threads on it. Anyway, I started making this, hello, baby Collie. And the only parts that are left are picking up stitches and doing a three needle bind off and then picking up stitches and binding off to edge the like armhole openings and the neckline. But the problem is that picking up stitches is the worst part of knitting and I hate it. And also three needle bind off is a pain. And so I simply have not done it. But it's very interesting construction, this garment, if I would ever finish it, I just haven't. Okay, so here's the back. So the back is a vertical stripes and so it's, it's got the green stripes are like uh, gar it's the garter, and so they sort of pop out. So I've got the gray background and then the green stripes. And so the back is like this, vertical stripes. And this part is all knit at, in one go, right? From the top to the bottom. And then, excuse me, please do not sit on the computer. Thank you. And then you, and it also is the same way on the front. It's got the horizontal. So it sits like this. There we go. So here's the front. So the very top of the front has the horizontal striping. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's got the horizontal striping and then it has the horizontal striping on the back as well. Okay. And then, and then what you do is on this 
Okay, here's the back, and here's the side seam of the back, underneath the underarm. You pick up here, and you knit, and you, you knit this way now. And so here, here's the side seam that goes under the underarm, and so this is knit in the other direction. So you pick up along there, and then knit like this. And then you have these increases. And I added some more increases towards the bottom because I noticed that some people's tails were a little bit short and I didn't want that to happen to me. So I did some more increases to make this tail a little bit longer. And so you do that on both sides at the front. This is the front that starts here. And then you three needle bind off those pieces in the middle. And so how it will look in the end, oh no, I've lost stitches. I've been so irresponsible. <laughs> I didn't even have, um, mm. okay. Yeah, manage this crisis here. Um, I apologize. I'm probably going to cut here and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I fixed it. Um, so anyway, I was just going to show you how it will work once I find the inspiration and motivation to do all the stitch picking up. That needs to happen in order for this to be done. So anyway, um, here we go. So this part will get seamed to this part with three needle bind off. And then these little tails are just for tying, you know, like a cute little crop top. And so I really need to finish this before it becomes fall and it's too cold to wear it. But, oh my gosh, picking up all along here, and then, well, I don't know if I'm actually going to do it. I'm supposed to pick up all the way around the neck opening and the arm openings, and just pick up stitches and then immediately bind them off. I don't know if I'm going to do it, man. I may just leave them raw, because uh, it's not going to add that much of a difference. It's not going to look that different. I may just, I may just do this part. confronting the the laziness within yeah I don't know if I'm gonna do it but um I need to just I need to just finish this part just get that part done and then we can see if I feel inspired to um finish the edges or if I want to just leave them raw is it gonna make a difference I think it will I really don't I don't think it would help it not curl I don't think I don't think it would do anything so we'll see Anyway, this is the Argyle by Claire Lakewood. Um, nothing against Claire or her design. Um, I just, I really overestimated my ability and willingness to do this much seaming. It's not even seaming, it's not even seaming. It wouldn't be that bad if it was seaming. Just picking up stitches. Ooh. Anyway, there's that. Uh, I'll finish it eventually. It's cute, right? It's a cute little tank top. It'll be so cute with my high-waisted brown long skirt. It'd be a great outfit someday when I find the motivation. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm knitting that out of Hobby Rainbow Cotton 8-4 again in gray brown and army green. I also added a little bit of length. Like I added more stripe repeats on the back, which means that I had to add more length to the other direction so that's that okay and then my second work in progress is a cute little tee mock neck tee this is the colette tee by Weetra design which i knit something else from Weetra design the retro button tank that i like so much i also knit that that was also Weetra design so this is my second one from them, her. 
Um, so this has a really nice shoulder construction, which as you probably know, I love a good shoulder construction. So it's got a mock neck and then the immediate increases produce that shoulder seam at the top and then you start the raglan like that. So it increases out in a line across here and then once you get to the shoulder bone then it starts increasing out for the sleeves which I think is a very nice and sophisticated looking shoulder construction. Um, I am, I also added bust starts. I added quite a deep bust start because this is a close fitting garment. The designer recommended negative ease. And so in order to get a good fit on top with the shoulders, I needed to do quite a bit of negative ease, which means that I needed to add a, a deep bust start. So I added my deep bust start, and then I'm also doing some decreases on the sides just to bring in the fabric right underneath. So those are the modifications that I'm making. I'm knitting this out of Taki Cotton Classic in uh, light milk chocolate. I like this color. This is a mercerized cotton, and the ply is sort of braided, if I can show that to you. So it doesn't split very much, which is really nice to work with. And I think it's very pretty. I think it's making a nice fabric. Um, and it's got short row shaping on the top, which you can kind of see the double stitches there. So it's got short row shaping to fit the shape of the back neck a little bit better. Um, yeah, so there's no bust shaping or waist shaping in the pattern, but I have just added that. But other than that, no other modifications. And I think I will knit the sleeves to the recommended sort of, not elbow length, but they are long. They're long short, you know. So there's that. And I just, I think that this is going to be a really sophisticated, beautiful garment, like, because it will fit really well and I think it'll just look really nice. And I also, I have this plaid to make a new skirt out of. And I think that these two together are going to be a really cute outfit. Very academic, I think. Mm. So that'll be pretty. So I'll whip up another skirt in this fabric and wear it like this, and that'll be really nice, so. Yay! So that's that, I think. Those are all my knitting things. I am just, uh, I've started my second year of my PhD program, and it is hard. <laughs> but more interesting than it was last year, I think. No offense to anybody that taught me last year, I just... It's more fun in second year. Maybe it's because I know what I'm doing more. But, yeah, no. Summer's over, which sucks. I had a great summer, though. Read a lot. Cooked a lot. Got really creative in the kitchen. Which I'm about to do now. I have a bread that I just made and is cooling right there. It's bread machine bread, so I didn't make it. But I made it. And I'm going to do a chickpea tuna melt It'll be very good so anyway there's that uh that's everything so uh let me know if you've got any questions or whatever uh you can follow me elsewhere if you want keep up with me more day to day and that's it thank you so much for hanging out and looking at all my clothes i love making clothes i love sharing my clothes with you and inspiring and encouraging other people to make clothes that fit you. You know, that's the main thing. It's so hard to find well-fitting clothes sometimes, but make your own. Okay, that's it. Goodbye.